Welcome back everyone here. So we're, today we're going to be starting by downloading Playgrounds. Now Playgrounds is going to allow us to actually start our journey into coding. We're going to use it to code our games, our videos, and get into programming. And basically it's just going to take us from not knowing anything about programming into being professionals. And the first thing we need to do is just head to the app store. Now this is totally free. So, and we're gonna go to search, just like downloading any other game that you always download. And we're going to type in play ground now i'm actually using my ipad here and it's not actually the ipad pro it's a very basic ipad so you're just going to be able to run this on your ipad or iphone even just fine and i'm going to basically go to swift Pla playground this one and i already have it downloaded but if you don't you're just going to have to click on get and then download it i'm going to open it and basically at the bottom here over here you can see that you have more playgrounds and I selected the first one, it's called Learn to Code 1. And that's the one that I'm going to be using for this tutorial. So the first thing I'm going to be doing is I'm basically just going to click on Learn to Code. And once it opens, we'll be able to start our introduction into programming. And here we are. So today we're going to learn how to code. And we're going to be learning about commands. Now commands, if I just click on the next slide, they're just basically like instructions. Just like when you're trying to follow a recipe to bake something or even an instructions to complete a video game or a level at a game. They're just a set of instructions. That's how simple they are and that's what we're going to learn today. Now if we keep on going, you probably realize that computers follow instructions just how we do it too. As you can see, when you're setting up a drone for example or if you're opening up a new video game or lego set there is usually a user manual that comes with it and that user manual will allow you to learn everything you need to learn about how to assemble and how to set up your game lego or whatever it is that you're actually trying to build as we move forward we realize that computers follow it exactly the same way us humans, we are their user manual. We basically give them commands and we give them instructions so that they follow it and then give us an output or give us a result. And as you can see here in this slide, it's telling us something important here that you need to follow the instructions in the correct order or you end up with something unexpected. Now imagine you're trying to build a car or you're trying to build a Lego set. If you end up putting one piece before the other, you can actually end up ruining the whole thing and you might not be able to really end up with that beautiful Lego at the end. And that's exactly what we need to pay attention to when we're creating any program or when we're creating any code. To put the instructions to the computer in the exact same way we would like it to begin. Let's move forward and we realize that actually creating code allows us to create our own instructions for your computer to carry. And our goal when we're coming to write any program is to know exactly which instructions and in which old order we should write in order for, for the computer to understand to us. Just how sometimes your math teacher or your science teacher gives you instructions for you to learn, it's the same thing. You're basically trying to teach the computer how to do something and you need to be nice, you need to be slow and you need to be very precise on how you say it for the computer to understand. Now, throughout this tutorial and throughout this playlist, we will basically be giving instructions to our friend here. He's called Byte. That's him. He's our little alien here. And basically, we're going to be giving him some instructions and he will follow those instructions. Now, the instructions will be something like move forward, pick up a gem, turn left, turn right. And believe it or not, that's how simple programming is. It's just as simple as providing some code or some instructions to something, in our case, it's our friend he, Byte, that when they follow it, they will reach an end goal. As you can see, an example here of a command or code is over here, collect gem. Collect gem allowed Byte he to jump up and pick it up. And I can restart this, as you can see, collect gem, and he jumps up and actually collects the gem. This is basically what we're going to be doing. So, as you can see here, this is the first code that we're being introduced to. And as you can see, we've got two words, collect and gem. Collect is the verb here, and gem is actually the thing that we're going to be doing it. So, as you can see, there is no spaces. And we also started with a small capital, uh, sorry, a small letter here, C, and then a capital letter here, which is G. And that's always the same thing in programming. You always start with a small letter and then move to the higher letter for every single word after the first. 
at the end of each command, we're also going to be typing a parentheses or brackets. Let's move forward. And now we're actually going to be starting our very first command. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to click on start coding. And as you can see, we introduced here into an environment. Now, as you can see on my left side over here, here is our code. And on our right side, here we actually have our environment. As you can see, we've got by here. And if I click on this, you might be able to hear some background noise and you might actually be able to interact with it. This is basically our game and we're going to tell Byte exactly what to do. Now on the left side here, you might have this as entirely empty. So let's go ahead and actually make sure that everything here is empty. If you already have it empty, that's fine. But in my case, it was already filled up. And what we need to do is we now need to give instructions to our friend Byte here what to do in order to collect this gem. So what do you think we should do? We have move forward and we have collect gem. Move forward will allow Byte to move one step forward and collect gem will allow him to collect the actual gem. So let's be smart here. Let's start and simply type in move forward. So to do that, I'm going to bring my keyboard up and I'm simply going to type in move forward and put two brackets at the end as you can see here. Now why did I put small m and small f? Remember, these are the rules. These are our instructions to write the first uh, word in a small letter and the second word in a big letter. Let's go ahead and click on run my code over here and see what's going to happen. I'm going to click on run my code and once it loads up, as you can see, Byte actually did follow our instructions. It followed our manual and our command and it moved from here to there. But as you can see, we can tell that move forward allows us to move one step. And here we have, we start off being here, we have one step over there, and then a second step, and then a third step. So what do you think we should do? Think about that for a second, and once you figure it out, basically go over here, and I'm going to say the answer now, we basically need to write move forward three times, because each single time we write it, we move once. So I'm going to click on move forward, just like this, and then another time, move forward. And by the way, you can easily just collect, select this one or that one to write the command rather than having to type it every single time. Finally, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be clicking on collect gem. But first, let's actually run our code and see what the situation is. And I'm just going to move my head to the other side and I'm going to click on run my code. So let's go ahead and do that. And once it loads up, as you can see, we're going to move one, second, and third. But by he, our friend, doesn't know what to do. So what we are going to be doing now is we're actually going to click or type in collect gem in order for us to collect our gem. So let's go ahead over here and I'm simply going to type collect gem. Now let's run our code and we're going to see what's going to happen. We moved once twice, three times, and then we collected our gem. And that, is, that means we actually completed this project. It's our first code, it's our first program. We allowed a character, which is Byte, to move three steps forward and then collect our gem. Let's do one more exercise and then that will be it for this episode. So we're going to click on next page over there. And this time we're actually gonna need to write much more commands. As you can see, we already learned how to move forward and how to collect the gem. But now we need to learn how to even turn left and right. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to remove all of these and do it ourselves. We're over here and we need to go over there. Now let's try think about it here. Last time we learned that move forward allows us to move one step to the front, which means that we need to move one two but then we are blocked by a wall and in this scenario we need to actually start turning left luckily for us we learned a new command a new instruction called turn left so what i think we might do is we might move forward twice so type in move forward move forward and then enter the third instruction which is turn left to turn left and let's see what happens once we do that so i'm gonna go over here like this 
and I'm going to type in move forward or actually I'm just going to select this over here so I'm going to select move forward remember we need two times so I'm going to click move forward again and then turn left let's go ahead and run our code and see what's going to happen now so once it loads up we realize what we've done we went move forward move forward and we turned left oh but it seems like we actually did a mistake and the mistake here is that although we gave the instructions to move forward twice and then left we didn't actually tell the computer what to do after it turns left what do you think we should do here we should continue to move forward two more times one here a second time here and then collect the gem so let's do exactly that i'm going to click on move forward again and then move forward again and then finally what we can do is that we can actually collect our gem so i'm going to click on collect gem let's go ahead and actually start this and see what's gonna ha happen i'm going to click on run my code we're going to move forward once we have here a second time we're going to turn left move forward move forward and collect the gem and again one more time we did this perfectly and we've actually written a lot more complicated code but we managed to get it to work and now we can move into the next exercise and for the next exercise we're going to be doing this in the next episode now i hope you enjoyed this if you didn't and if you feel like it's really complicated that's totally fine this is very normal it's sometimes even professionals at apple or google or even anywhere in the world they find it hard to write some code but as you practice and as you do more things you can actually end up creating beautiful things like what we just have here and you will always feel rewarded Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.